What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at advanced micro devices, AMD stock, ticker symbol AMD, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Monday, March 4th. Alright guys, a another crazy day for AMD in the books, up $10.11 a share, 5.25% hitting a new all-time high. AMD has been on an absolute tear just in the last couple of days. I mean, if we just go from this point about an hour before market open on Thursday to uh, after hours close on Friday, the stock is up 15.5% just in that time frame alone. So let's take a look at this thing. You know, it's essentially flat after hours. It's up about another 50 cents. Listen, as always, just take after hours with a grain of salt, whether it's in your favor or going against your current sentiment. Volume is very low. So, you know, as a bull, of course, I'd rather I'd rather have it be up 50 cents than flat or down 50 cents. I'm not delusional, right? It is the same price or the real price more so. But, you know, volume is low. The real test is always the market open the following trading day. But let's move on here to the five minute chart and do our daily volume profile analysis ritual. First of all, if you are new here, please subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Jump aboard here and I'll uh, continue to do my best to provide some value to you each and every day. So on the five minute here, what we're always looking for, guys, is I want to see changes in volume that through the lens of time of day context is a little bit out of place, okay, but also correlates with a clear move in stock price. That tells us that, hey... A bigger sample size of the market in this moment agreed with that move, maybe more so than a move around it. So really what I'm looking at is, is kind of these two moves as the most obvious. And if we take a look at the volume profile here, we can see here that, you know, I mean, unfortunately, as far as time of day context is concerned, we typically kind of expect a slow fade and it's kind of within the realm of realistically, you know, what you might expect to see. Now, I say unfortunately, but truthfully, it's kind of a net neutral. It's not really a good thing or a bad thing. It's just kind of a wash, okay? I just like to pull some data out, so it's unfortunate for me more than anything. Let's take a look at the 30-minute now. What I want to see on the 30-minute is obvious levels that we can look at heading in to Monday's trading day. And you guys will hear me say a lot, you know, as you continue to watch these videos, when we see big moves in stock price, which if I zoom back out, you can see we clearly have had one the last couple of days. I really want to see some psychological barriers get up underneath the move as quickly as possible. One way to do that is to get psychological, self-fulfilling prophecy levels, indicators. The most popular ones are the only ones I'm interested in because they have the most eyeballs. Right, I believe TA is 100% is a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, and that's the only way I would want it. But I want those psychological barriers, right? Get, get that feet up underneath the move. And what we've seen here on the 30-minute chart is that 50 period has made light work of this move. It is only six points below the stock price, and the stock price is up in the last two trading days. It's up 27 points. It has been right there with the stock. Right, which is a good thing to see. If you're bullish, you like having that psychological barrier. Ideally, come Monday, you'd see that continue upside, get above that psychological level of 200 bucks a share. Right, the the 50 period here on the 30 minute, get above 200, and add a little bit of extra kind of beef to that level. Because um, really, what would a bear want in this scenario? Right, put yourself in the shoes of the enemy, so to speak, or bears. You got to think about what would a bull want in this scenario, and bulls. What a bear would want is ideally to see this 50 period staying low, not creating a one factor, right? Just one factor of many, but just an added psychological barrier so that they can continue to make the argument or or maybe feel out the fear of the bulls that they're that the stock's kind of trading on thin air, right? So bulls getting these, these indicators upside as quickly as possible up underneath big moves is a great thing to see. So come Monday, if I'm a bull, I'd love to see that 50 period get above 200 bucks a share. Any retest, I want to see a high volume bounce pull away back up toward all time highs. Okay, bears, you're on the 30 minute to be more specific or specifically, and then we'll look at uh, the four hour and the daily. 
Ideally, you guys would like to see that 50 period stay below 200 bucks a share and the stock crack downside below not only two, but the 50 period moving average on big volume. Now, let's move on here to the four hour chart and take a look. You can see that the four hour is going to take its time. All these indicators on the four hour, they're going to be slower than the 30 minute. The daily is going to be even slower. So, I mean, I'm still watching it. To be fair, there's not a lot of context we can pull out of it, but I would love to see that 50 period continue to move upside from a bullish perspective. Bears, you'd want to see that flatten out on the four hour as much as possible. It does move very slowly, though. And honestly, I'm not going to waste any more time on the four hour because that's really all I'm watching on the four hour. What's the most important thing that we can look at here? This is going to be the most crucial chart, especially Monday on AMD, the daily. It's the most obvious. It's the most contextual. The moving averages aren't really relevant here in the near term. The nearest one is the 50 period or the 50 day on the daily at 163.30. I'm, you know, they're there, but I'm not really paying immediate close attention to them. And when we're looking at the daily, okay, and especially at all-time highs like we currently are on AMD, right, we start getting a look at kind of a blank slate, super obvious and super contextual story. What I oftentimes say <clears throat> in these videos is, is that if, if you showed this chart to any human being just off the street with somewhat of an understanding of what a stock chart looks like and kind of how candles operate. And you ask a hundred people, a thousand people, okay, what's the story on Monday? What should I look for? The most common answer is the one I want to pay attention to because again, self-fulfilling prophecy, that's the one that has the most eyeballs. That's the one that's going to have the most decision making around it. And that's what everyone else is considering including, by the way, because they understand the game, institutions and funds. So what's the clear story on AMD come Monday? Well, if I'm a bull, I very much so want to see 200 bucks a share hold as support. Any back test of 200, I want to see that hold as support on big volume and a big volume pull up through 202, 203. Okay, that would be a beautiful claim and test or test and claim more so of that new support level of 200 bucks a share. We broke it today, but we haven't really had the opportunity to prove it as a multi-day hold. Now bears, really clear for you too. Whatever it takes, give up 200 bucks a share. Get down through two on big volume, retest it and claim it as resistance. Reject hard and fade down on Ideally above average volume, but anything, anything above below average volume for me would be sufficient. The problem is that with, with below average volume moves, you don't really have a big enough sample size in the market to be definitive enough. Okay. Now, what were the options traders or what was the bias out of the options traders here today? Let's take a look at AMD's, AMD's options chain. 1.94 million total contracts traded. 1.27... 1.27, I suppose, million calls, okay, 1.27 million calls, and 667,000 puts. We are seeing just about double, almost, the call bias compared to the put volume. That's pretty wild on a stock like AMD. That's a pretty heavy bias to the call side, okay? But, hang on, we're not done. If we break this down by time frame, if you actually look at this, Every delta range from the 21 delta all the way to 100 is call heavy, right? But the very short-term speculators, the far out-of-the-money contracts, those cheapy, speculative, gambly style contracts, the 0 to 20 delta range, that one is actually leaning just slightly put heavy. It's nowhere near as extreme as some of the other ratios, but it is put heavy nonetheless, okay? However, you know, that's the very short term and it's not an extreme bias to the put side and we are seeing a relatively heavy call side bias. Listen, this is just one factor of many. As always, the option traders can be wrong. Make sure to manage your risk. That is number one. If you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. Hey, listen, I really do appreciate it. Jump aboard and I'll uh, do my best to keep uh, providing value every day. I appreciate you and I'll see you next week.